I think most people who've heard of Sjogren's um, have heard about the dryness um, symptoms primarily of eyes and mouth, but over 50 to 60 percent of people with Sjogren's also have systemic symptoms or also termed extra glandular um, symptoms that can affect um, multiple parts uh, of the body and they don't often all occur at the same time uh, and they can be quite variable as far as from patient to patient. There doesn't appear to be a set pattern. In some ways it breaks down into a simple one-third rule. A third of people will have, you know, sort of mild, annoying symptoms that may fluctuate and come and go. Um, over time, um, but never develop anything severe. A third of patients may have, you know, one or two areas that seem to be quite dysfunctional for them, um, and that may be their same pattern over time, or they may actually have one thing that's annoying and then go away and not be annoying and develop another system. Um, but it's all manageable. Um, and then another third um, who may have a more severe process where things are, you know, um, more significant, um, may need more medical intervention, and may not get, have periods of significant remission and may progress. Um, I really thought I would when a patient's first um, diagnosed, often, fortunately, there's a real sense of relief. There's finally an explanation, a name that they can put on, you know, a mystery illness or a diffuse symptoms that they've had. Then that's usually followed by, but this is chronic and it's autoimmune and we don't know how to make it go away completely. And yet to be determined is whether symptoms are going to respond to management and whether the quality you know, of life is going to be, you know, any better. Learning more about the disease, working with your doctor, and connecting with other people you can share experiences with will help you find options for managing your symptoms. While no one experiences all the possible symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome, they can include fatigue and joint pain, concentration and memory loss, also known as brain fog, dry mouth, mouth sores, dental decay, difficulty with chewing, swallowing, speech, taste, and dentures, dry nose, recurrent sinusitis, and nosebleeds, GI problems such as stomach upset, gastroparesis, autoimmune pancreatitis, heartburn, reflux, and esophagitis, dry skin, vasculitis, and Raynaud's phenomenon, peripheral and autonomic neuropathies, dry eyes, corneal ulcerations and infections, recurrent bronchitis, pneumonia, and interstitial lung disease, abnormal liver function tests, chronic active autoimmune hepatitis, and primary biliary cirrhosis, vaginal dryness, and painful intercourse. Sjogren's can also affect the central nervous system, can cause fetal heart block in babies whose mothers have Sjogren's, and can sometimes lead to the development of lymphoma. That is why it is so important for the patient to be followed by a physician who understands the signs and symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome. There is no evidence at the present time in any manner scientifically that Sjogren's syndrome is contagious. And secondly, a very important question that people ask is whether or not their longevity will be decreased by Sjogren's. And the feeling is that Sjogren's does not uh, decrease longevity at all which is really good news for patients. Managing your health with Sjogren's syndrome includes the fundamentals of good health for all of us. It's important to eat a well-balanced, anti-inflammatory diet based on the Mediterranean diet model, which includes lots of whole fruits and vegetables, whole grains, less meat and dairy, and very few processed foods. A good exercise plan is very important, tailoring it for what works for you. It may be running, walking, yoga, or tai chi, but it should be something you can do regularly and with pleasure. But one size won't fit all. And so it's what are the options that you can 
learn about, gather from, you know, healthcare providers that you're seeing, and then try some for you. And ultimately it has to be something that works for you because that's the only way you're going to do it. If lifestyle management um, symptoms aren't enough to, um, or lifestyle management isn't enough to improve symptoms, um, we have a mild medication um, with a, a good safety profile that's not a steroid um, that can um, help um, with some of the um, underlying symptoms. It, it works at the cause of the disease. So um, we have that available and often that can help um, the fatigue, uh, joint pain, um, those type of symptoms. Sometimes if people are having skin rashes, it can also help um, that. And then if somebody's having more significant um, active disease, um, whether it be uh, lung involvement or really significant joint pain, um, or you're trying to sort out um, what's reversible, what's may not be as easily reversible from the immune system, sometimes a very short course of steroids um, uh, can be helpful. Talk to your physician about the various prescription and over-the-counter medications that are available to help alleviate symptoms, such as dry mouth, dry eye, joint pain, and fatigue. Then you and your rheumatologist can develop an individualized treatment plan.